Okay, so I'm just uh, taking a break here from, I've got to machine a rail that uh, was set up wrong on a gun. And uh, I'm gonna, I just realized that sometimes I refer to ogive and to ballistic coefficient. And I figured I'm gonna take just a minute here and explain what those terms mean. They're thrown about all over the inner tube. They're thrown about in all the books. They're thrown, there are about five ballistics texts that actually explain. Um, but first of all, let's just start with, uh, again, I've been fiddling around on YouTube and looking here and, and, and see, I guess I, I need to explain that I was, uh, I guess I was raised differently. I wasn't, for the most part, I wasn't raised to believe in ghosts. I went through a time in my life when I was completely infatuated with and believed in the whole UFO thing, because I grew up in the 70s. And there were books out, all kinds of, I mean, it was the, it was the age of the Aquarius. I don't even know what that means, but it was the age of mysticism when people wanted to, one of the people maybe even, well, I guess they're making money on a book, but trying to explain things that they didn't understand, trying to simplify the world around them. The world's not simple. It just flat isn't. Um, so I just noticed I actually have a piece of paper here because there's some stuff here I can't remember that have to do with ballistics. Um, and we're going to get to that in just a minute because we need to talk about G1 versus G7. We need to talk about MIL versus MOA. And uh, how some of this stuff affects or impacts. The number one thing to remember when you're going to shoot any range whatsoever is that there's always a bullet combination that is better or more accurate. Ideal only in terms of accuracy. Accuracy at the target. Now, I also build quite a few hunting guns, so in that light I deal with accuracy and lethality. But that's a different... Uh, you know, then you've got to get into terminal ballistics as well as um, getting the bullet down there. First you got to hit it, then you got to hit it with enough energy, and then you've got to have a bullet that does what it's supposed to do. That's all fine. That's, a, that's another. Right now we're talking specifically about accuracy. Most people that are out right now are confused about accuracy. And I promise you, on these videos, I will show you accuracy. Not the... I'm, I am not somebody who's going to do this thing about um of course they're all not of course they're one of course and then just show stuff all over a plate no you need to have a standard against which to i need to put this put this up here this is a a cheat sheet i had to revert to a cheat sheet because i need a, i need to have in one of my explanations here i need to be able to explain to you how feet per second and miles per hour um because we hear about faster than a speeding bullet, we hear about Mach 1, we hear about airplanes, we hear about bullet flight. Everything that we deal with, for the most part, has to do with supersonic flight. Uh, somewhere up in the Mach 3-ish range. So, we need to be able to convert, this is my little cheater here, to be able to convert from miles per hour, which is what we, how we express wind and wind drift, and uh, feet per second. So I got a little chart here that says 10 feet per second equals 7 miles per hour, 20 equals 13, 30 equals 20. I'm going to just set this aside because this is for another time. But I felt that before we start down this, um, before we start down this road of accur showing accuracy, I need to be really clear that just about any platform out there will shoot short, light bullets that are shaped like this quite accurately. This is a typical bench rest profile. Flat base, although people are starting to add little boat tails to them, but basically it's a parallel bearing surface, a fairly blunt ogive, and a bullet that self starts into, self starts into the lands really well. It's easy to balance, and for 100 200 and marginally out to about 300 
this is the most accurate. That's inherent accuracy. Because one of the first questions I asked, I said, okay, I have some money in my pocket, now I have a budget for guns, so I'm gonna build a gun that does everything. I'm gonna build a thousand yard gun and set it up in such a way that then I can shoot at 100 and 200 and 300, a dual. Well, it's like gearing in a car. Any racer knows that a quarter mile car is geared different than a roundy round car, is geared different than a, a big over the course like a NASCAR type car. All these gearing things, one goes fast and uses the power one way, one moves the power way up in the curve and uses it in a different way, and then there's all these points in between. Well, bullets are the same way. Again, there are no mysteries here. So, ogive is one of the terms that's often referred to. An ogive is that portion of the bullet that arcs down to a point. That's half of it. So I'll draw the other half of the ogive here. But the question is, what is ogive? What is a seven ogive? Is it in inches? Is it in mils? No. This is the beauty of physics. This is the beauty of science. This is the beauty of math. This is the beauty of expressing thing in, things in universal terms. Um, when we set signs out in space for the aliens to see in case an alien comes by so that we can learn our language, they put out some of the universal constants like, you know, this planet is composed of water and we designate this as H2O and H is also here and it's also here and any alien physicist can look and go H, 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 hmm, looks like hydrogen to me. So now we got hydrogen, now we got a basis somewhere, we have the building blocks. So here we've got metric calibers with a 7 ogive, we've got Merkin calibers with a set. So how do we do, what, what does ogive mean? And there's a simple, distinct answer for that. Ogive means this curve expressed in diameters. Now, expressed in, again, I'm not, I'll use terms like this, but then I'm going to take the time to explain what that term means. A seven ogive means that uh, seven times, let's say the diameter of this bullet is 30. If a 30 caliber bullet has a seven ogive, then you take seven 30 calibers, and this could be expressed as 762 millimeters, or it could be expressed, expressed as 0.308, it doesn't matter, whatever this is. A 30 caliber seven ogive versus a 22 or 6mm or <coughs> they're all expressed with a 7 o people go, how come you can have a 7 ogive on a 7mm or on a 22? The reason is ogive is an expression it is no it's a description take this 30 caliber move 7 times it away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Make a dot. Now hook a string to that dot and a nail on the string and swing it. I put it in the wrong place. Seven diameters of ogive means that seven diameters away is the origination point of the ogive and then you swing an arc and if that arc, now some are going to fuss with me when I use the term arc and for that I apologize but let's just say that that point is supposed to be over here somewhere so that this arc more nearly expresses the actual I'm not, I'm not very good at this drawing thing but okay here's a seven diameters away ogive and it takes that if that arc comes up and just fades into the body of the bullet smoothly that's called a tangent ogive it comes up tangent to it the term for something different, let's say the bullet is shaped like this, and you do the seven diameters, but you move it back here, and that you still got the seven ogive, but the origination point means that this doesn't just fade in, it comes out, and there's a definite change in, I call it change in pitch right here. This is called a secant ogive. So it can still be a radius of seven diameters, but instead of coming in tangent to the bullet line, 
A secant ogive originates at a different point, so it comes in and it forms a distinct line around the bullet. So even the fact that a bullet has a seven ogive does not mean it's the same as another a, a seven secant ogive. Once you draw this on paper, you start to see a secant seven ogive is different than a tangent seven ogive. Now, if you don't care about this, or if you already know it, my vast apologies. But I'm here to say any of this kind of stuff is well understood, easily understood, and can be understood by a layman. And I need to say, there's a hunter's ed class going on upstairs, and I'm taking a break. I'm not teaching right now. So I'm kind of in hunter's ed class mode here. And one of the things I yell at the kids right up front, I want to hear a stupid question. What is the one stupid question, people? Oh, yeah, yeah, can bullets fly backwards? Um, 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 what would happen if you shot a sheep out of a cannon? Um, I said, nope, nope, nope. All good questions, beautiful questions, wonderful, wonderful questions. The one, 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 one. Got to keep my other hand out of the picture. One stupid question is the one you didn't ask. Now, there's a lot of stupid answers. Unfortunately, when you go out and ask the good questions, that's when you get shot down by the stupid people. Generally, people who are too insecure in their own skin to admit, I don't know. So I also tell the kids, one of the best answers, and I hope you hear this, if you ask a question, one of the best answers in the world is, I don't know. And then maybe it can be followed up by, let's go find out. Let's go explore this and find out. Because, you know, when it comes to teaching uh, the level of of ballistics and gun stuff that we teach in hunters education there's not going to be very many people or questions that I can't answer but when somebody comes up and says and this goes back to my little cheat sheeter which is better for this bullet and this you know I heard I got a seven secant ogive and it's got a G1 BC of uh, 0.42 and it's got a G7 BC of 0.2 something I'm just throwing it out because I think G7 is for Phoebes uh, that's like giving an alternative, you know, we got the gravitational constant of the planet Earth and we got the gravitational constant of the planet Mars. I understand the argument, people. I understand the why of the argument. I understand that G7 more closely approached. Who cares? None of that matters because Co. E. Ficient is not a thing. Coefficient is a relationship. That's what coefficient means. That's why I said earlier I was designing a retaining wall. The guy said, well, if I could come up with a slippage coefficient, I could come up with a design for the retaining wall. We had to figure out a way to decide how to, you know, what's it going to take to slide this retaining wall on the, I was doing it on a pure rock surface as opposed to the common gravel, dirt, uh, the alluvia that's present around here. He's like, I don't know how to do bare rock. How do we come up with a coefficient? So, that's a good question. We had to find a slippage coefficient. But remember, coefficient. Now add ballistic. That get, puts it into the realm of, oh, I could explain this to you, but then I'd have to kill you. Which is crap. Okay, so, before I start yelling BS, ballistic coefficient means that it has to be compared to something. Coefficient to something, to a standard. In this case, the commonly accepted standard is the 750 grain A max as expressed in the 50 cal. This is assigned the number 1. 1. 50 cal, 750 grain A max is number 1. Now, a bullet that has a 0.500 ballistic coefficient, to put it in simple terms, flies half as good as this number one. It flies half as good. You launch it at the same velocity as bullet number one, which is the 50 cal 750 grain Amax. A really good bullet's going to get closer and closer because this is a really, really good flying bullet. 
Now, this is not the actual bullet of number one. I'm just establishing the concept of coefficient for all of you basement pukes that are going to think that the facts are more important than the description. There are times when a concept is more important than whether the thing was on a Ford chassis or a Chevy chassis. And this is one of those cases. A ballistic coefficient is comparing a bullet to an accepted standard, and that accepted standard is way up in the stratosphere. Number one is a 750 grain AMAX. So if you shoot a bullet next to it and compare it, then you come up with a ballistic coefficient. So whether what you establish, if you use a different bullet for number one, and you establish a G7 coefficient, it's completely and utterly meaningless. The differences are down in the freaking dirt, people. If you figure trajectories using both of them, you're going to come up with the intents of a percentile of each other. So what's the gain in the real world? And the answer is zero, except two statisticians. I'll tell you how statisticians work. Two statisticians, two number guys are sitting on a hillside, and they're shooting in a target over here, and the first guy shoots and hits three feet to the left. Guy says, okay, make a correction, so he hits three feet to the right. Hit! Don't care if that was clear or not. That's statistics. Statistics are BS! What we want to do is hit stuff. All we concern ourselves with is making bullets capable of hitting stuff. Now the concept of hitting stuff at say 600 yards is a whole different thing than having a uh, a rifle that's capable of hitting it consistently. I was out squirrel hunting one time, the guy next to me had a 223, and he's babbity, and I'm taking a shot every 10 minutes with my, at that time it was a 243 Ackley improved, and we're shooting at three, four, five hundred yards. After a morning of shooting, he's like, well, I got 17. And I had gotten like seven. I win. And I said, well, yeah, but I got my seven in like 12 shots. I was, well, yeah, but what difference does that make? He shot five or six hundred rounds. He's just going bang, 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 bang till he lucks into one. It's, uh, I call it the shotgun approach. Well, to me, that's not fun. Now, did I diss on him? No. He was having a blast. I was having a blast. I shot my, you know, and I, as a percentage, I did better. But he was less concerned about accuracy. So I don't care what this gun shoots. If it's MOA or what, I throw enough out there, I'm going to hit one. And I win because I got 17 or 15 or whatever I said the first time. All these numbers are. The concept, though, is I'm the guy, and my work has been about making the gun that will call and hit the shot. Way too many times in my life I've said, hey, watch this, and then fell flat on my face. Which is it's still good entertainment. It's good for all and sundry, but... If I'm trying to say, hey, watch this, and then go do something. If I walk up and go, hey, bet you 50 bucks I could make uh, 9 out of 10 free throws. Whew. Now we have something. And so now I better, I better be able to do 9 out of 10 free throws. Um, and the reason this ballistics thing becomes relevant is because we're leading up to the fact that a lot of guns are sold on the market under the... Scam. I'm just going to call it what I think it is. But in most cases, it's just butt ignorance. It's because the person selling the gun doesn't know any better. But they say, well, ballistics are kind of complicated, you know, and these bullets aren't going to sleep yet. And uh, this particular gun doesn't shoot that good at 100 yards, but, ah, uh, dude, it's a, it's a hammer at 600. Yeah, well, it shoot, this thing shoots quarter minute at 600 yards. But uh, the fact that it can't group an inch at 100, is that's, that's immaterial. Now, there's so many things wrong with that statement, but even a thinking person gets out there and tries to prove it empirically by shooting, and they find out, wow, 600 yards is a long freaking ways. Was that the wind? Was that me twitching? Was that uh, a butterfly stomp over in Sapporo? Uh, but I was raised differently. I've never been attracted to like the zombie movies or things like that because I was raised 
by people that said, I mean, there's, there has to be an explanation. It's called a mechanism. And my kids are worse than me. And even though they're completely inundated with things like gender fluidity and uh, the fact that there are no rules in the world, they're still able to navigate because they don't believe in ghosts. They don't believe in, you know, my kids, if they saw a zombie, would go, huh, I wonder how in the rip it gets its motive power. They wouldn't put it in those terms, but what makes it tick? I put food in. I have a reaction, same thing as the engine in the car. You know, I'm telling my kids when they're two years old, we're gassing up the car, what you doing, Dad? Feeding the car, putting some food in it. Same thing that we do. There has to be a motive, motivation, modus, method. There has to be a mechanism in place. So, zombie? I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry, that thing is dead. That makes it inanimate. That makes it, it can't move under its own power. And if it does, what's powering it? Somebody shove a battery up its butt. What's, okay, this is fascinating. So, you go cut a zombie open, check it out, because it's it, it turns everything in life from fear-based and reaction-based to curiosity-based. How in the world did that zombie and that whole group of zombies, that whole, well, obviously, it all falls on its face when you realize that 90% uh, of the stuff that's out there purported to be information or TV show or entertainment or anything is just simply not based in science. People throw around the term science fiction. Oh, yeah, that's a good science fiction. That's a good sci-fi show. I'm sorry. No, it's not. It's total crap. Um, unless a sci-fi show uses science, which relegates it to the term SF, speculative science, speculative fiction, specu science. Unless it has good science, it's nothing more than another fantasy like Lord of the Rings. Great stuff. You know, I was reading Tolkien long before anybody knew it was cool. When Led Zeppelin came out with the songs in the 70s, I knew what they were referring to because I had already been reading Tolkien. Nowadays, it's Lord of the Rings. But the point is, that's irrelevant, except that I was never in this thing of having trouble separating the real from the unreal. Lord of the Rings, fantasy, fake. Same thing as dropping anvils on heads in the cartoons. Same thing as Wiley Coyote and Roadrunner. So, that's what we're here for. That's what we're we're, we're gonna we, we're gonna sh we're gonna illustrate and then show. Absolutely say, boom! This is what it looks like. This is what a good group looks like at 100 yards that will compete at a thousand.